Pokemon just revealed nine new starter decks, and each of them have two Pokemon EX. We also got a sighting of Eevee EX in the wild, so we've got 19 new Pokemon EX to talk about, as well as a couple of non-EX cards that I think might be kind of cool. I'm Jeff from InThirdPerson.com. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and let's talk about all of the new reveals. This line of starter decks is meant to celebrate each generation in the Pokemon TCG. If you're looking to pick these up, they're releasing on November 22nd, 2024, and they cost 850 yen each. They're not going to be particularly competitive. They are of the, again, the starter deck variety, but there's a ton of cool EXs here, as you can see on the boxes here and let's go through all of these in order of the generations by the way i also don't have deck lists for these so in case you're wondering about that level of detail we we know what the exs are and there's a couple of non-ex cards that we can look at as well kicking things off is pikachu ex lightning type 190 hp and it's got two attacks first one tail Whap, does 30 damage and its second attack for two lightning and a colorless thunder does 180 damage and 30 damage to itself now uh, just to temper expectations here you're probably noticing this card is not particularly strong and i will admit most of these exs are of that sort of starter level of power so against other starter decks it's probably fine but in a competitive capacity, this one's not going to hold up. A couple of them might have some interesting competitive implications, but Pikachu at the very least is not it. My boy Snorlax EX is here, and it's not great, but maybe kind of cool. <laughs> Let's talk about it. It's got an attack strength for three colorless energy, does 80 damage. This is not good, but it's toss and turn press is pretty fun for four colorless energy does 120 damage you flip three coins and you do 120 damage for each heads so in theory you hit three heads you're doing 360 damage you're one hit KOing pretty much anything in the game as long as it doesn't have any sort of damage modifiers like Charizard with a hero's cape uh, but you're you're flipping coins here and it's going to um, I have terrible luck with coin flips, so I probably wouldn't play this, but there are some people that will try it and they're going to get lucky and start one hit KOing Charizard left and right, and that's actually kind of awesome. Lugia EX is a colorless Pokemon with the attack Hyper Whirlpool. For three colorless energy, does 140 damage, and you flip a coin until you get Tails. For each heads, discard an energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. 140 damage isn't great. You're only really knocking out non-rule box Pokemon. But you do have that if you flip a whole bunch of heads and you discard all their energy, that could be enough to end certain games, especially against low energy decks that have a hard time accelerating. So that this could be kind of cool, but it's probably not going to see any competitive play. Tyranitar EX is a stage two with a whopping 340 HP and it's dark type. It has the attack crush for one colorless energy, does 50 damage for each energy attached to this Pokemon. So maybe in a, I guess even in a Lugia deck, I mean, this is probably going to come out after Lugia rotates, so it's not going to matter, but 50 damage for each energy attached. Theoretically, you could put a whole bunch of energy to one hit KO anything, but you're going to need like six to seven energy to start one shotting multi-price Pokemon. Well, at least like the stage twos when they're over 300. I don't think you're going to be able to get enough energy on here to make this worthwhile. So I would not hold my breath on this attack being particularly strong, especially with Dark Patch going away. Probably by the time this card comes out, we'd be relying on stuff like Janine's Secret Technique, which is better than nothing. But I don't think we're going to get enough energy on here to really one hit KO multi prize Pokemon. And then it's second attack for one dark and two colorless. Tyrant Crash does 150 damage, your opponent reveals their hand, and discard a card you find there. A little bit of a tr control element there, but I do think there are better cards in the format that do similar things. Kyogre EX is a water type Pokemon, and one of the benefits to that is it's got access to Baxcalibur for easy energy acceleration. Both of these attacks cost a lot though. Uh, it's first one for water and two colorless, undulating waves does 80 damage, and you may switch out your opponent's active Pokemon to the bench. 80 damage is not great, but being able to force your opponent to put their Pokemon on the bench could be kind of cool in certain strategies where 
if you're like up against a deck where they don't run that many switch outs, you could potentially just trap them in a position where they can't fight anymore. But it's not that hard to play around something like this either. So I don't think it's ultimately worth it. It's second attack for two water and two colorless, does 230 damage, and you discard two energy from this Pokemon. Again, if you're playing this in the context of a Baxcalibur deck, getting that energy on there and getting it back on is probably not that big of a deal. I'm not sure that 230 energy or 230 damage is enough though, especially when you could just play Chen Pao and one hit KO everything in the process. Blaziken EX's attack is not great. Burning Assault for a fire and a colorless does 200 damage and you can't attack on the following turn. Yes, you can get around it by switching Blaziken in and out of the active or out and in to the active so you can attack on consecutive turns, but its ability seems kind of cool. Overflowing Spirit, once during your turn, you may attach a basic energy card from your discard pile to one of your Pokemon. There are, whether you're playing something like a Terra Pikachu EX that's constantly discarding energy or you're trying to power up an attack that's really expensive, Blaziken EX could be kind of cool. Now, having to set up a stage two for one extra energy acceleration per turn may not be worth it, but I do think that the ability is intriguing. Dialga EX has the attack Scream of Time for one metal energy, 20 damage, draw a card, that's no good. Its second attack for three colorless energy is Metal Blast where it does 100 damage and does 20 more damage for each metal energy attached to this Pokemon. You're probably gonna have three metal energy onto this, so you're starting at 160 and then Matang could accelerate more and eventually you could get to a point where you're one hit KOing everything, but I don't think this is good enough. You're gonna need too much energy to take out meta relevant attackers. So uh, not much hope for Dialga EX in a competitive capacity, but against these other starter decks, it's probably fine. Lucario EX already has multiple bad <laughs> EX cards that have come out in Japanese starter decks. And unfortunately, here's the third one. Its first attack, Aura Uppercut, does 50 damage. And then its second one, Tornado Rush, does 100 damage. And during your next turn, this Pokemon's Tornado Rush attack does 100 more damage. This is not going to see any play in a competitive capacity. Reshiram EX has Fire Wing for one fire, does 40 damage, and its second attack for two fire and a colorless Scorching Fire does 200 damage, and you discard an energy from this Pokemon. Theoretically, yes, you could use that Blaziken to reattach that discarded energy back to the Reshiram to attack on multiple turns, but I just don't think 200 damage is good enough, especially when three fire energy can be hard to accelerate. Amoongus EX has two attacks. Spore Ball for one Grass Energy does 30 damage and your opponent's active Pokemon's now asleep. That's a little annoying, but I don't think the damage is good enough. And then its second attack for a Grass and a Colorless, Mushroom Swing does 100 damage and you flip a coin of heads, this attack does 80 more damage. So you have to flip heads and hopefully you can knock out something like a Luminion or a Squawkabilly. Otherwise, this attack is pretty bad. Xerneas EX is really pretty, but its attacks are not that great. For one Psychic and a Colorless, Aurora Beam does 50 damage, and then its second attack for two Psychic and a Colorless, Rising Horn does 120 damage, and if your opponent's active Pokemon is a Pokemon EX, this attack does 100 more damage. To its benefit, oftentimes the Pokemon in the active is an EX these days, so you're probably hitting uh, 220 damage more often than not, and you can power this up with Gardevoir EX, but Gardevoir has much better attackers than Xerneas EX, so it's probably not going to see any play there, and I struggle to see it see any play in a competitive deck either. Noivern EX has the benefit of being a colorless Pokemon. If you've got a Terra in play, that could activate Glass Trumpet, and you could get a bunch of energy on here to power this up, but I don't think its attacks are particularly strong. Strafe does 50 damage, and you may switch this Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon. Could be kind of cool if you're playing some sort of trapping strategy or walling strategy where you, you attack with the Noivern and then you move into a Mimic you or a Cornerstone Mask Ogre Pond. So it could see some play potentially in that capacity, especially because you only have to attach one energy. Uh, the other attack, Sonic Blast, for three colorless energy does 220 damage and you do 30 damage to yourself. Not particularly strong, but um, yeah, I don't think it's gonna be enough. That first attack though in tandem with the right sort of walling or trapping Pokemon could be kind of cool though. Mimic U EX has two attacks. The first one, Mischievous Hands, lets you choose two of your opponent's Pokemon and put three damage counters on each of them. So a little bit of spread damage here, but three is not, not a lot, and I'm not sure what you can really follow up with there. And then its second attack for two Psychic and a Colorless, Ghost Trip does 120 damage, and your opponent's active Pokemon is now confused. 
Confusion's pretty easy to get out of. You can just retreat and then you're you're done for or just switch it out. And 120 damage is not great either. So I don't think this one is going to make the cut, which is unfortunate. Mimikyu's a fan favorite Pokemon. I mean, Mimikyu is usually weak in the video game, so it kind of translates to Mimikyu being weak in competitive play. But I think there's a number of people that would like to see a nice Mimikyu EX, and we haven't had one yet, even though we've had multiple Mimikyu EX at this point. Zacian EX is a fan favorite from the Sword and Shield era, and it even kind of has an attack that is uh, reminiscent of Zacian V from Sword and Shield, where actually it's kind of both, kind of mimicking both sort of traits of Zacian V. Its first attack, Steel Armament, does 20 damage, and search your deck for a basic metal energy and attach to this Pokemon, then shuffle your deck. It's kind of like, sort of reminiscent of the ability of Zacian V, where you could look at the top three cards of your deck as your ability and attach any, at many, any metal energy you find there. This is clearly worse, but it's kind of reminiscent of that. And then its Slashing Strike does 210 damage, and during your next turn, this Pokemon can't use Slashing Strike. It does... 20 less damage than Brave Blade back in the day, and Slashing Strike is just not going to be good enough, especially 210, and then you can't attack on the next turn. Yes, you can get around it by switching in and out, but 210 damage for three is not worth it. Alcremi EX could be kind of cool. Its sweet gift ability lets you heal 30 damage from one of your Pokemon, and I guess in certain cases, I don't know, maybe Gardevoir, you can skew the math on some of your Pokemon here and there so that you're doing more damage. Uh, or just like healing certain things off, like if you're playing against a frost last deck or think something, you can counteract that sort of ability and those damage counters. But I don't know if this is good enough overall, especially its attack whip beam for 160 damage for three energy is not not great. So I'm not sure the ability is going to be enough to make it relevant. Coridon EX, I mean, we're, we're still waiting for a good Coridon card. Unfortunately, Coridon got the short end of the stick and maridon has been doing pretty well competitively. It's two attacks here for fighting colorless, claw slash does 50 damage. And then its second attack for two fighting and a colorless, revenge buster does 100 damage. And if your bench Pokemon have any damage counters on them, this attack does 120 more damage. You could set up that damage as simply as dropping a Halucha from Scarlet and Violet, and then start swinging for 220 damage. Uh, but 220 is going to be a little short on some of the big meta relevant EX Pokemon. And three fighting energy is kind of hard to accelerate with the way things are with fighting decks right now. Last EX we're going to look at here is Claude Sire EX. It is a beefy 280 HP for a stage one. Uh, not the highest we've seen for stage one, but it's a, it's a decent um, HP amount. Claude Sire EX is a stage one with 280 HP. It has two attacks. First one, Poison Ring does 60 damage and your opponent's active Pokemon is now poisoned. During your opponent's next turn, the defending Pokemon can't re retreat. So Poison plus trapping them in the active, uh, not not great and then its second attack giga impact does 220 damage and during your next turn this pokemon can't attack uh also unfortunately not so hot sylveon has the ability safeguard where you get to prevent all damage done to this pokemon by attacks from your opponent's pokemon ex yes this is worse than mimikyu where mimikyu also blocks pokemon v and you don't have to evolve up to it but this is foreshadowing some cool things that are happening with Eevee in the future. We have seen Eevee EX, and I know this is our first time talking about it, and this might be your first time seeing it, but Eevee EX is a thing that's going to be coming out in the Terrastal Festival set in Japan, and it's going to be in our 2025 special set at the beginning of the year. Uh, more details on that soon as they arise. Uh, but this one has the ability Rainbow DNA, where you can play Pokemon EX that evolve from Eevee onto this Pokemon to evolve it. You can't evolve this Pokemon during your first turn or during the turn you play it. Uh, but the ramifications of this are that you can play regular EVs, you can play four regular EVs and four EV EX, and then you can evolve into whatever your evolution is on either your Pokemon EX or your regular EVs. So uh, I think there are potentially some big things coming with uh, EV decks and you could potentially tech in this Sylveon. As for the attack on EV, on EV EX, it's got Quartz Shine for one fire, water, and lightning, does 200 damage. Very awkward, but we do have a lot of cards that help cover the the stellar Terra costs here, making it a little more reasonable. But really, this is here just as a way of evolving into your Evolution EX cards. 
Lilligant's attack is terrible, but its ability Sunny Day lets your grass and fire Pokemon's attacks do 20 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon, giving you a little bit of boost for those archetypes. Toad Scroll has the interesting ability for a shortcut where while this Pokemon's on your bench, your active Pokemon's retreat cost is two colorless less. With some of the bigger meta relevant Pokemon in the format right now, something like a Raging Bolt or an Iron Hands, this could make it a little easier to move around the board with those types of Pokemon. Those cards are probably not going to set the world on fire, but I didn't want to have a chat about those and let you know that they're on the way. We are probably going to see at least some of those appear in level one starter decks out in the West, and then the rest of the cards will make it into future sets uh, throughout the year is my guess. I don't think we're going to get them all in one shot, but throughout the year, we will see a bunch of those cards appear in our 2025 sets. But what say you? Do you think they're all bulk? Do you see some potential in any of those cards? Let me know in the comments below. But for now, I got to get going. Thank you so much for watching. You can find me on all the things, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram at in third person. You can find me on Twitch at in third person where I stream the Pokemon trading card game every Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern time. And check out the website in thirdperson.com for more articles and videos on video games, board games, and other nerdy pursuits. So until the next one, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.